Welcome back everybody. So I've been asked a number of times what are the different types of cranes used. So we're going to talk today about the different types of mobile cranes and their uses on site. Look at some of the advantages and disadvantages of them. So we'll start with one of the most common and handiest cranes out there. They're used a lot in Australia is the non-slew mobile crane. Now this type of crane takes into account brands such as the Terex Frenner, which by the way is an Australian design, fantastic crane. You've also got the TID, you've got the Hummer. Now they're very versatile cranes, so if you need to pick up a load and move it around site, great cranes. They come into sizes up to 55 tonne in terms of the Frenner, uh, sorry, in terms of the Hummer, and the Frenners will go up to 40 tonne. Now if you need to take a load a fair distance you're not limited by how much boom you've got so you can pick it up you can drive it around site you can drive it two kilometers to the other side of site if you need to so rather than pick a load up put it on the back of a truck drive the truck over there set up another crane and unload the non-slew crane such as the Frenner is a fantastic crane to have it takes a lot of extra work out of it very handy crane but they can be very dangerous. So if you are operating one, you've got to make sure that you are operating within the capacity of the crane and don't try and do anything silly in it. Always monitor your ground conditions because whenever you're traveling, that's always going to be the one thing that's going to hold you up is your ground conditions. So always select your good travel path, take the best route possible, look at the ground conditions, look at any obstructions, anything that might get in your way. But they are a fantastic crane and they are a very versatile crane. So they're your non-slew mobile crane. From there we'll look at the truck mount. So the truck mount is an older version. They're a great crane if you need a fast quick lift. They're easy to set up, easy to throw the boom out, um, but they are restricted in their steering capabilities. They don't have all wheel steering like um, most other cranes, but they can get to a job site pretty quickly, set up pretty pretty quickly and throw it out. That's typically what I actually started driving the slewing cranes was in a um, old 50 tonne Caddo's and Tadano's and all that type of machine. Very, very handy and versatile machine for a quick job. But as I said, you are limited on a lot of sites because of their steering capabilities. It does take a big turning circle to try and maneuver it into position. And you're also limited by your ground conditions because they don't have as good a capabilities as some of the more modern cranes. From there, we'll look at the all-terrain cranes. So the all-terrain cranes are probably the most common ones you see driving around on the road and driving to site and all that kind of thing. They can come in some pretty large sizes. The largest one in Australia is a 1,200-tonner, um, which there's only the one of as far as I know over here. You get 750 tonners, 800 tonners, but generally you'll find them up to 130 tonne, 250 tonne. There are quite a number of different variants out there. But they are a great machine, great for um, manoeuvrability on the site. They do have all-wheel steering. You can crab steer them. You can steer just the rears, just the fronts. So if you're getting into a tight spot, it's actually quite amazing some of the places you can get these. I mean, I've had instances where I can put a 200-tonner into an area where I couldn't get a 50-tonne truck mount just because of the versatility of the steering. The suspension um, will handle off-road a little bit better. It won't go into a real boggy ground. Um, if you do that, you're probably going to be looking at the rough terrain. But they are great in being able to lock the axles, lock the diffs, etc. Give you that extra traction when you need to on if the ground's not exactly perfect can take a little bit longer to set up due to the fact that most of them will have a pinning boom, which means they're only throwing out one section at a time, whereas on the truck mounds they're typically a live boom, which means you can just throw it all out. So an all-terrain will take a little bit more time to set up. Quite often you'll be waiting on counterweights to arrive on trucks, so it's not just a matter of just rocking up. You've got to wait for the trucks, put your counterweight on, and get all set up for the job. Now some of them do take a fair bit of counterweight as well, so it'll take a number of trucks to get it out to site as well. But when you need those bigger lifts, the all trains are the ones that are going to do it for you. 
Now, as I said, if it is a bit boggier, so the ground's a little bit softer or whatever, you'll probably want to start looking at a rough terrain. Now, a rough terrain, they're pretty easy to pick. Um, you, um, generally, because of the huge wheels on them, generally two axle, and they are a lot better for moving around in the more boggy ground. So if a site's only just developing, all the civils hasn't been done, you'll find those roughies are great for getting into those areas. They're pretty versatile machines. They also have the all-wheel steering, crab steering, etc. So they're good at getting into those type places. Don't typically lift as much as an all-terrain, but for general setup, you'll find the rough trains are a very handy machine as well. Now, if you're getting into the really big lifts or you've got multiple big lifts around site, this is where you'll probably start looking at a track machine, something like a crawler crane. Now, crawler cranes can come with a hydraulic boom, but they typically come with a lattice boom. So at the start of a job, they'll typically set up the crane on site, and that way they can then just track that around to the different jobs. They will typically pick up more than an all-terrain for a comparative size, and but you do have to make sure you try and get on some sort of level ground. Quite often you'll have to get the silvers in to make a crane pad for you once you get to the position in order to lift it. The other advantage is if you aren't quite in the right position, you can always just track it forward a bit rather than having to pack the crane up, move it off again, and then reset up. All right, so they're your basic different types of cranes you come across in general construction. That's in terms of your mobile cranes. You then got your tower cranes, so you get your hammerheads and your luffers and your different types of tower cranes, but we might have a talk about tower cranes in another video in the future. Today I just want to talk about those mobile cranes because the different types of mobile cranes do tend to confuse a few people. So they're your general types of cranes that you're going to come across in construction. Now in terms of what licenses are required for each crane, so your rough terrain, all terrain, truck mount, crawler, they all require a slewing license. Now they do vary depending on what size crane you're required to operate. So the classes you do get, you can get a C2 license, which will cover you up to a 20 ton crane, C6, which is up to 60 ton, C1, which is up to 100 ton, and a CO, which is your open crane, which will allow you to drive everything beneath it. Now with a non-slew crane, you can get a CN license, which is your non-slew crane. Now, with your non-slew crane license, that won't allow you to drive any slewing crane. However, with a slewing license, it will allow you to drive a non-slew crane. I hope that makes sense. Now, keep in mind the non-slew crane license, there is no weight capacity on that, so you can operate up until the largest non-slew crane. Whereas on the slewing crane, you're restricted by whatever weight limits you are in your particular class. All right, so that's your license requirements for it. So I hope that helps you out there. And if you do need any further information, I know I've been off YouTube for a little while. I'm trying to get back into it. I've been a little busy of late. So if there's anything you need to know, just leave it in the comment section and I will try to do a better job at getting back to you. All right, so thanks for your time. Have a good night.